WSSB, Girl TV. Welcome to WSSB Girl TV, where we're strong, smart, and bold. This week's show is all about healthy bodies. We learn about the eyes, muscles, hand washing, first aid, and sports safety. We also celebrate National Sports Day and interview Dr. Pamela Robbins. Finally, we go exploring at the Powell Crosley Estate. We hope you enjoy today's show. Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm so glad you're watching our show today. The eyes are the part of the body that lets us see. Light enters the eyes through the pupils, the small black circles in the center of our eyes. Then the light is hit focused by the lens in our eye and onto the retina. The retina is made of special cells that help us see colors and see in the dark. The cells that allow us to see in color are called cones. The cells that help us see in the dark are called rods. Rods and cones function together to process the light that enters our eyes and tells your brain what you're seeing. So you may be wondering, how can you help your eyes stay healthy? First, use protective eyewear when doing things where you could injure your eyes, such as when playing sports or when doing projects with your family, like building a birdhouse. Second, wear sunglasses to protect your eyes from UV rays from the sun. Make sure they protect against both UVA and UVB rays. Did you know that there are foods you can eat to help your eyesight? Vitamin A plays an important role in helping the special cells in the retina we talked about, the rods and the cones. Vitamin A can be found in orange fruits and vegetables like carrots, cantaloupe, and sweet potatoes. Yum, cantaloupe sounds good. I think I'll go have some. For Girl TV, I'm Michaela. Bye. Hi, I'm Fiona. Do you know what to do in case of an emergency? Here are some helpful tips if you or somebody you know has been hurt. Anytime you or someone you know has been hurt, you should find or call an adult who can help you. If you have a cut or scrape, apply pressure to the area with a clean towel to help stop any bleeding. Go to a sink where you can wash the wound with soap and warm water, then cover it with a clean bandage. If you have a burn, tell an adult immediately. immediately. Then go to the sink and run the, bur the burned skin under cool but not too cold water for several minutes. The water helps reduce the damage to the skin. Call 911 in case of an emergency like a fire or if, the, or if the adult you are with is seriously hurt and there is not another adult around to tell. Ask your parents to show you where they keep the first aid kit and band-aids so that you know where to go if you get hurt. You can also ask your parents to show you how to use the phone to call 911 so that you are prepared for an emergency. For Girl TV, I'm Fiona. Bye. Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Megan. And we're both strong, smart, and bold girls. Who love Girls Inc. of Sarasota County. Hey, Megan. Did you know that every dollar donated to Girls Inc. of Sarasota County this month will be matched up to $150,000? That's $300,000. I know. I think we should do something to celebrate this match up epic proportion. I think we should take the 30-day match challenge. That's right, Sarasota. Megan and I are going to match our outfits every day in September. It's going to be crazy. We want you to match too. So follow us on Girls Think SRQ's Facebook page. Every time we match, we want you to match at donatenow.networkforgood.org forward slash Girls Think SRQ. And if every strong, smart, and bold person in Sarasota matches up to $150,000, we're going to get tattoos! What? I try. I'm so much more than words to find. I'm going to try, try, try. Hi, my name is Letty, and today is Sports Day. Sports Day usually happens all over the world. The world's number one sport is soccer, second is cricket, third is field hockey, fourth is tennis, fifth is volleyball, sixth is table tennis, seventh is baseball, eighth is golf, ninth is basketball, and last but not least, 
10th is football. And if you are wondering what cricket is, have your ears open wide. Cricket is a sport played on a really wide and long field that uses a bat, a ball, and a wicket. You are to have 22 people to play cricket. And if you, and if you are wondering what a wicket is, keep listening. A wicket is three sticks in a line that you try to make the ball go three. Sports Day is celebrated on August 1st. The founder of Sports Day is unknown. It feels like a mystery. Even if you don't play sports, you could still participate in Sports Day by learning about sports. Or you could even be an equipment manager. Sometimes there are awards given out. So on August 1st, you should play sports, learn about sports, or be an equipment manager. For Girl TV, I'm Letty, your Girl TV reporter. Bye. Hi, I'm Michaela. You might think that you only need to wash your hands when they look dirty, but the truth is there are lots of times when you, need, when you should be washing your hands. Hand washing prevents the spread of germs, which are bacteria and viruses that live on just about anything you touch, and most of them can make you sick. Good times to wash your hands are when your hands are dirty, after you go to the bathroom, before cooking food, before eating food, after blowing your nose, after coughing, and when you have been around someone else who is sick. The best way to get all the germs off your hands is to use warm water and soap. Lather up your hands, wrists, bef between your fingers and around your nails. Count to 20 or sing the alphabet or a happy birthday song. Then rinse off the soap suds and dry your hands with a clean towel. Well, I need to go wash my hands. For Girl TV, I'm Michaela. Bye. Hi, I'm Zandy. Did you know that there are three types of muscle? Smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. Smooth muscle forms the walls of your esophagus, stomach, and intestines to help match up food for digesting and moving through your body. Smooth muscle is also in the airways of your lungs, your blood vessels, and your bladder. Smooth muscles are also called involuntary muscle because it contracts and relaxes without you having to think about it. I'm glad we don't have to think about it. That's a lot of work. Cardiac muscle is the special muscle that forms your heart. The cardiac muscle has unique connections that allow the muscle cells to contract in a coordinated effort to pump through the heart, kind of like a group dance. Skeletal muscle is what most of us think of when we hear the word muscle. It is the muscle attached to our bones. These muscles can help, you, can help your body move so that you can walk, jump, reach for objects, write, talk, smile, and even move your eyeballs. Skeletal muscle is also called voluntary muscle because these muscles can only work when you think about using them. For example, you can't pass a ball without thinking about it. Muscles are made of protein. You can get protein by eating meats like chicken and fish and by eating dairy products like cheese. Peanut butter and other kinds of nuts are also a good source of protein. Finally, you need to be active to build strong muscles and keep them strong. Some people do push-ups and sit-ups to help build muscle. Things like dancing, running, and jumping are also a good way to build healthy muscles. Dancing sounds like, sounds like a lot of fun. For Girl TV, I'm Zandy. Bye. Hi, I'm Letty. Playing a sport is very is a very good way to stay active and healthy, but some kids get hurt participating in sports. So here are a few, few simple steps to stay safe while having fun. First, wear protective gear. You should always wear closed-toed supportive shoes like sneakers when playing sports. Some sports also require gears such as a helmet, mouth guard, and knee or elbow pads. These items can feel silly to wear, but without them you are at risk of seriously injury, injuries that could keep you from playing for a long time. Second, before and after playing you should stretch out and warm up. To warm up you might march in place or do some light jogging. 
After you are warmed up, you should stretch. Stretching helps, your, helps protect your body. Muscles can get hurt without stretching. Muscles can get pulled or teared if they are not stretched before playing a sport. Third, make sure you know the rules of the game. Knowing the rules can protect yourself and others on the field. By knowing the rules, you can avoid colliding with your other player or performing a dangerous move. Finally, don't play if you are already injured. It is hard to sit out whenever you are really injured, but it is really important to give your body time to heal properly. When you are hurt, be sure to tell your coach and your parent. If you continue to play when you still are injured, you can make things much worse, keeping yourself on the sideline even longer. Now you know the rules of being safe. You can focus on being active, healthy, and having fun while being safe. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. For Girl TV, I'm Letty. Bye. Girls Inc. is teaching girls not just about now and how to be a better person and how to be a better leader now. They teach about history and how women were treated before. It inspires all the girls to do stuff they never knew they could do. I've learned to be responsible and I've learned to do what I need to do and to get it done. Because it shows younger girls and older girls about the real world, the real world, how it's like. You know when you go to school and the teachers just teach you? When you come here, the teachers teach you, but they treat you as if you're family, as if they care about you. It's one of those places where you can feel like you can be yourself no matter what. You don't have to worry about being scared or anything. It's just a really big opportunity for me to be here, and I just love it. Just being able to laugh out loud and being like girls. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zanti. Zandy, today I'm here with Miss Pamela Robbins. Hi. How are you? I'm good. First, please tell us exactly what it is that you do. Well, I'm actually an acupuncture physician, a doctor of oral medicine. I practice looking after people's whole body from head to toe in a natural way. Miss Pamela, can you please tell our girls what acupuncture is? That is interesting. I want to first ask you, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> acupuncture, actually, to put it very simply, is actually um, a physician's way of tapping into the energies of the body. Now, our body have basic 12, I would call them like super highways from head <laughs> to toe, okay? And what we do as um, acupuncture physicians, we actually use sterilized needles to be able to go to various different what we call acupuncture points to tap into those energies to either um, help to open up those super highways if they get into a traffic jam for example okay so we help them to clear those super highways so that our body can actually learn how to heal itself by bringing energy from head to toe so it's a way of helping the body heal itself because our body actually has an incredible ability to do that. Um, it is one of those things that I want to make sure and I want to tell everyone, do not try this at home. It is not just uh, taking um, a safety pin or, or a paper clip and poke at different areas. Um, if you want to try or learn about acupuncture, please do see a professional um, like myself. Uh, to, to go find out a little bit more and it's great just try it. How did you become interested in working in your field? Um, it started actually as I was a child um, but during that time I got interested in working in Western medicine 
and as I worked in Western medicine field for a little while, got a little tired of looking and seeing people how they are not taking care of their health because I keep seeing the same people all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to go back to my roots and work in more in a prevention style. What kind of schooling or training do you need for your job? Um, you actually, in my profession, to become an acupuncture physician, at least in the state of Florida, you would need to have at least a master's degree. And um, in that kind of training, depending on the schools you go to, it ranges between three to three and a half years of graduate work. Mm -hmm. is, is your job fun? What do you like about it? <laughs> my job can be fun. I guess it all depends on how you define fun. Okay. <laughs> Um, it is it is very rewarding to be able to see people finally understand and grasp a glimpse of how they can take care of the health because even though um, breathing it's a little bit overrated but it's also nice to see that when people finally able to breathe when they cannot breathe or when they have a lot of pain in various different areas and finally they're free of pain so that's the rewarding part of it. What is the hardest part of your job? The hardest part actually is to be able to help people understand that we have this body and this is all we have. And to help people teach people to change their lifestyle in baby steps. And that is the hardest part for me. If you could change one thing about what you do, what would it be? You know, that's actually a, a difficult question because um, <laughs> There are a lot of things that I would not change. Okay. Um, there are some things that I would change in terms of how I can help people to see their lives a little differently and to help them to understand how productive their lives can be. Now, how can I help them change? Again, it's little baby steps and that is tough. Do you have to wear a uniform? Mm, generally, not really. <laughs> this is what I wear in the clinic, and sometimes uh, you see me a little bit more less formal, but between scrubs to what I am right now. Okay. <laughs> what are a few of your career, career goals? Um, there are several different things. Uh, right now is to be able to advance uh, in different specialties because in the field of, I practice acupuncture, so I'm not sure if you've had that before. Have you had that before? No. Uh, okay, you should try that. Okay. <laughs> um, in the field of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine, it can be very general. That means I would see patients from those that have headaches all the way to um, mm, women who wants to have babies that, that cannot and to elderly who are dealing with heart disease and diabetes and and to broken shoulders etc. Um, so my goal is to be able to hone in on some specialties. Um, one of the things I'm looking into is um, gynecological. Are you, do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. It means a lot of women issues. Okay all the ailments that come, all the different type of sickness that come with women. And also uh, in the field of endocrinology, meaning all the hormones and why do women have mood swings and things like that. What was your first job? Wow, <laughs> that sounds quite a long time ago. <laughs> um, my first job outside the home, okay, uh, I dealt in several different areas but my first job that I can remember outside the home that I have was actually working in the hospital that is in my field that's where my Western training came in I was in the world of cardiology what is your favorite thing to do outside of work what's my favorite thing to do outside of work <laughs> um, if I have an opportunity I would love to read mm -hmm. um, the other thing that if I have an opportunity, I would love to play table tennis. Do you know what that is? Mm, yeah, a good, good, good <laughs> game. It's very, very exhilarating. <laughs> Who is your role model? I have actually several role models in my <laughs> life. Um, 
I have grandparents who were actually physicians themselves. Um, I also have a mother who actually was a, a midwife, and she was a midwife for many, many years, meaning that she helped deliver babies. Okay, that, that's her specialty. And um, I come from a family where Chinese medicine is very predominant, so I grew up with formulas from my grandfather. So there, I do have a lot of role models through life as to this direction that I'm going to, or that I am in. Any thoughts or advice you have for our girls here at Girls Inc? Um, one of the thoughts that I would have is to believe in yourself, that you can do anything, to, to know that it doesn't matter, math and sciences are not just for the boys, <laughs> okay? Uh, they, they can grasp anything in terms of from simple biology to, um, you know, aerospace aeronautic science uh, to, to very difficult science. It really doesn't matter. It is not the difficulty of, of the subject is here and here, you know, to have confidence in yourself because you can go anywhere and you can fly. You heard it all here today for Girl TV. I'm Zandy. Bye. Bye-bye. The house you're currently standing in is a 1929 mansion that was built uh, for Gwendolyn uh, Crosley. Pal Crosley, her husband, built this for a, um, a winter home for her. They're originally from Cincinnati. He had a small fish camp in Siesta Key back in 1929, and now he uh, decided he wanted a mansion. He was kind of friends with Ringling, the Ringling Brothers um, uh, mansion down the road, and he talked him into building a house here on Sarasota Bay. The neat thing is that Paul Crosley Jr. was actually an inventor. Um, he invented various things like um, automobile, uh, which is a Crosley car. He invented a refrigerator. The first one was stackable doors in the refrigerator. He actually invented the first fax machine, um, as well as he invented a company that started accessories for cars. So in 1916, Prior to even building this mansion, he uh, made a million dollars, which is a lot of money back then. He built this mansion in 1929 for $350,000, um, which today's money, obviously a lot of money you could imagine back in 1929. Um, but he also bought these Cincinnati Reds. He was kind of upset that nobody went to the games uh, during the day because everybody worked as well as himself. So what he did is he invented night baseball. He started the lights in the baseball park, and you'll see a picture upstairs of that. Uh, so he's quite the entrepreneur, and uh, is amazing some of the things he did accomplish in, in his lifetime. Yes? Um, what was his most popular invention? Uh, I'd have to say the most popular invention would be, in hindsight looking at it now, is a fax machine. And actually, he invented it again before its time, kind of went away, and now think about how many times we use a fax machine. So probably the fax machine would be. Now the one I use the most is probably the, the doors on the refrigerator. That's used quite often, so uh, between the both of them. Do you like touring here? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, between myself, my managers, all my staff, we love working here because you can see how beautiful it is, the nostalgia, the history behind it. Um, it's, it's a lot of work to, for the upkeep to keep it uh, the way it looks, but um, it's very rewarding, um, whether it's an employee coming here, my managers, even our guests. We do rent the house out uh, as a facility to rent for weddings, for private parties, corporate events. Um, it's utilized an average of probably four days a week for, for those things. But uh, yeah, we absolutely love it, and I love coming down here. Yeah. Can you give us the range of prices of how much the money would cost to do the wedding or something like that? Absolutely. You know, if you have a smaller wedding, somewhat of a budget wedding, um, you could probably, between the house, the catering, the flowers, uh, things of that nature, the DJ could be in around probably the ten to $12,000 range. We've had weddings up to $100,000. They've uh, accommodated 300 people. They've had tents on the backyard with flooring and air conditioning. They've entered the front of the mansion on white horses. Uh, they've had them on elephants and carriages before. So it just really depends your budget and what you're looking to spend. Do people actually rent this house? They do, they do. Weddings, corporate events, and parties 
are the main focus of them. But uh, yeah, absolutely. We knew we had a jewel that it sits on Sarasota Bay, um, and we're proud to showcase and allow other people to come and utilize it. Yeah. What's your favorite thing in here? Um, I think my favorite thing here would be the backyard. Is you can see when we get outside, we'll probably take a picture, but of Sarasota Bay. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, you can see the manatees that come into the basin, the boat basin where Pal Crosley uh, used to have his boat. Uh, you can see the dolphins outside. You can see people fishing, and it's just, it's uh, true Florida, so it's really nice. Yeah. How do you preserve the house? One of the toughest things on the preservation, and it's a good question, is a lot of the upkeep. Upkeep. It's a historical mansion, so we have to preserve it properly within the archives of the history of, of uh, the guidelines. So in doing so, certain waxing, we can't just paint something, we can't just replace something without checking on, on a lot of the historical data. Um, but it's a lot of upkeep from, the, I have people here actually today painting, scrubbing floors, you can see waxing. Um, we have to because if it's somebody's wedding, it's a special day and it's always got to look great for them. If I had a walk-in safe, I would keep all my thousands and millions of dollars there <laughs> and never let anybody look. And if they ask me what that is, I'm just going to say it's a room. Hi, I'm Alexis, and I like the walk-in safe over there because I like how it's a walk-in safe, not the tiny, small ones that you just put, like, $20, $100 in. So... I actually like the whole house. So beautiful and they're and so beautifully cut on the edges and you can see things behind you and you don't even need another mirror. You don't have to go like that anymore. It's just, ah. I like the design on the fireplace because it's like aboriginal and I like how we added a design there and it doesn't really have to be anything, just mismatch of styles. So that's why I like it. Hi, my name is Letty, and I like the design on the chair because I'm guessing she likes roses and music a lot, and I, and I like roses and music a lot, so we have things in common. I like the peacock feather and the flowers and the vase. I'm Letty, and I like the intercom because, like, it could echo to the whole house, and, like, back then the maids will, like, the maids could hear you, and they could hear, like, everything you're saying, but, like, yeah. I, when I stand on this balcony, I feel like I'm on top of the world. <laughs> and if you look down, um, you could get like a dance floor. Um, you get some music and get your boogie on.